I've got a fun little project for you today, making custom rubber stamps on your 3D printer with some NinjaFlex filament. Now, of course, the first step, you're gonna need a 3D model. I went ahead and did my logo here. The, uh, the mushroom part, I did in Illustrator first and then just exported as an SVG. And then the text portion, I, I just used the text uh, tool in 123D Design. Once you get these how you like them, just export that and load it up into your slicer. I'm working in Cura, and I've already got it set up to work pretty well here. Uh, I've got it set to the 0.4 nozzle size because that was the only way I could get it to recognize the uh, thin lines on here, even though I actually have a 0.6 nozzle on and I'm too lazy to change it. So I just kicked the flow up a little bit, and I've done this before, so I know about how much I need to kick it up to get it to print right. That looks about right. Now I've got the backing is at about two millimeters and then the actual text part uh, raised area is another about a millimeter and a half. So here's how they came out. They're, they're not too bad. A couple little nurbles going on there. Now I'm printing in NinjaFlex on PrintBite and when you print on PrintBite with this filament it sticks really really well. A little bit too well sometimes. Um, I've got no heat on for this for sure. It sticks plenty well enough without kicking on any heat. You can see it's always a little bit of a challenge trying to pry it up, but since it is so flexible, once you get a corner up, you can kind of pull and use a little tool to help it get off there. And you can see, you know, of course, some of the texture from the nozzle, but I want some texture on there. I think that might be interesting, and I'm probably going to sand it off just a little bit, though. Um, so it's not too obviously, you know, printer lines. <laughs> and then, of course, I've got the cute little mushrooms. I did a couple of those. So you can see those little bit of blobby bits um, where it kind of just over-extruded a little bit or whatever. And then just when it's going back and forth between letters and whatnot, leaves a little extra extrusion. So my favorite tool for cleaning up that kind of thing is just a wood burner. I like this nice pointy tip. It's great for detail work. Just put it on a fairly low heat so you don't, accidentally melt through something you didn't mean to you know melt off too fast and that works uh, that works pretty well you know you you don't have to worry too much on a stamp about like the lower portion it's really just the top layer that's going to be laying down the ink or paint or whatever you're using so I'm just going to hit this a little bit with my dremel here just to kind of get rid of some of the lines because I don't want it to you know look like a 3d printed stamp once I stamp it uh when you do hit it with um, a sander with these flexible filaments, you know, you'll get a little bit of kind of these rubbery hang off bits and you can just pull those off or just go back over those edges with the wood burner if there's anything that's too stubborn. <laughs> Especially around these little tiny letters, I needed to make sure they were as clear as possible. I was really pushing the limits of what, you know, this rubber stamp can do with regards to legibility on text at the bottom, but I think it came out okay. We'll see how it stamps. So now we need to put a backing on the stamp. I'm just using scrap floor mats. I have a whole drawer full of foam scraps from different costumes and whatnot. So, you know, it's a good use for some of those little pieces that you save hoping that one day you'll find something to do with them. Of course, you're gonna wanna use a contact adhesive for this. That's the best glue for foam and it works fine for this filament too with something that's not going to have any actual like pressure on it. I mean, you're going to be pushing down. So if anything, it'll make it bond more as you use it. And just you put the contact adhesive on both surfaces, let it dry. I drew a little outline of where the pieces need to go on these just to make it easier to stick them in the right place the first time um, when I'm putting them actually together after the glue is dry. Hey, so we're good to go now. These are these are pretty well attached. They're not slipping and sliding or anything. So let's just see what they can do. I'm going to try it here with just some acrylic paint first. Uh, I didn't actually have an ink pad. Mine from probably 10 years ago, unsurprisingly, had dried up. <laughs> so just grabbed some paint just to see, you know, what we can do with that. And it, it's coming out pretty well. It, with paint, it's a little bit bloopy around the edges. So, you know, that's one look. Now, in my stash from my rubber stamping days, probably again about 10 years ago, I had lots of embossing powder. So... I got myself some embossing ink, which is basically just like a glue. The powder sticks to it, and then you heat it up, and it melts in place. Yeah. So I tried all, uh, all the different embossing powders that I have here for, for these stamps. 
My favorite here looks like I think this silver is probably the best one. It just gets that nice fully melted silvery look. The gold just likes to stay sort of rough and almost almost like you glue glitter on instead of melting like it's supposed to. So I think it's just maybe not a not a great emb embossing powder on that one. Eh, it you know it came out pretty well there. I'm gonna try it again here because I think some areas I didn't quite push down right when I was doing the stamp. It's a little bit of getting the feel for it. That one's that one's a little better. I'm gonna try a, a black now. Uh, this black embossing powder, if I remember right, again, not quite as good. And, and yeah, I didn't, and it fill it in quite as well. Now that little baggy thing that I'm kind of rubbing on there first, you'll see sometimes. If I remember that right, that was uh, something I got at some kind of rubber stamping fair or something. And it just helps to keep the extra embossing powder from sticking to your paper. All right, that's about it on these. I mean, you could see it worked pretty great. Uh, definitely, you know, you could revise designs just to see what's optimal for a 3D printed stamp, but dude, this is, you know, a pretty good possibility here. If I'd had this when, when I was like 12, I would have completely flipped out and made all sorts of custom stamps. So, you know, maybe you can make, like I did here, a logo for your business, or if you got kids, dude, if they draw you something and you turn it into a rubber stamp for them, I think they'd be pretty stoked. Um, just don't forget to reverse the design when you're printing it because uh, like my very first one I printed, I, I did it, you know, to where it looks right on the stamp, but then if you stamp it, it's backwards. So don't forget to reverse it before you print it. Just mirror it in whatever design software you're using. Oh, I think I'm going to call it quits on that one. I would say that's a pretty good test. Let me know if you guys have any cool projects you make with this. It's, you know, just a fun, simple thing to do. Maybe like a a weekend project just to play around with your settings. I personally love the flexible filaments and it's you know appropriate for a rubber stamp here because those are you know a little bit squishy. Um, I think semi flex would work just fine too but I had ninja flex already loaded up in my printer. So hey hope you guys enjoy and uh, yeah let me know if you if you have any cool projects. See you next time.